In this video, we'll learn how to view the results of a simulation and to format a graph. In the last video, we ran a simple simulation of this value right here. And what we would like to do now is to look at those results once again. That's going to take us to the results cluster. And now you can see the browse results, which was previously grayed out, is now active. When I click on it, it brings up the 1,000 calculations that we did. So viewing the results is a simple matter of putting your cursor in a cell that has an output where the output is active. You click on Browse Results and that brings up the results. There are other ways to see the results. One of them is to prepare Excel reports. If I click on Excel reports, you see this window comes up and it asks what you would like to see. I can show simulation results. There are customized reports, quick reports, input results, and you can see all the options here. I can also put in information about my model. I could ask for information about the inputs and, and the outputs and so on. So all you have to do is click the items that are of interest to you. Alternatively, we could go up here and look at the results by clicking on the summary. The summary brings up a very simple summary here that shows us outputs. I have one. It's found in cell C6. Here's the basic graph. Here is a summary of some selected statistics for this. The minimum value was 142. The maximum was 654 milligrams. The mean is 371. A fifth percentile, a 95th percentile. And I have the option of checking the inputs as well. So I can see here are the inputs. Indeed, they were the shapes that I put in. And the minimum, the smallest amount of coffee consumed in a day was 10 ounces, uh, about 37. And here you see the smallest amount of caffeine and the largest amount. Here is a results table, the simulation detailed statistics. Let's click on this. This brings up a detailed table here. I'm going to maximize it for the moment. You can see on the left hand side here all manner of statistics. This is for the total milligrams of, of caffeine. This is an output. Here you see the description. These are inputs because they are identified as distributions. Down here you have a very nice search capability here. If I wanted to know uh, what is the probability that 400 milligrams of caffeine per day is exceeded, I can see this is the 64.5 percentile. So that means 64.5 percent or 645 of my 1,000 numbers were 400 or less. So if we would like to know what's the probability that that is exceeded, that is 100 minus 64.5, and that would tell us that there's a 35.5% chance, or 35.5% of all uh, coffee drinkers exceed 400 milligrams per day. I could look at this, look for this another way. I could say, What's the 99th percentile? And I could type in here a point, uh, excuse me, I, I did that incorrectly. I shouldn't put 0.99. I should put 99. 99%, this says 99% of all drinkers consume 591 milligrams or less. So this is one of the things that you can learn from viewing the output. There are other output options here. You can get all the data from your simulation and some other things as well. But for right now, that's plenty.
we want to learn how to format this graph briefly. If you put your cursor anywhere on the graphic itself, do a right mouse click and choose Graph Options. You will see here a window opens up with a number of tabs. This tab, Distribution, controls the kind of distribution that you're looking at here. If I wanted a cumulative distribution, I would click Cumulative. When I hit OK, you'll see that that uses our data in quite a different way. Presents it in a very different way. Right mouse click back to Graph Options, and we'll go back to the Automatic view. And here that is. Right mouse click, Graph Options, Title. You can put a title on this. This is our demonstration. Obviously you would want a much more descriptive title. The x-axis, this is milligrams caffeine. We've got a y-axis. Let's say this is Probability density. I can go to the curves. You can change the color. You can change the style. I go to the legend. The legend is over here. Delimiters, that's the number of lines that we have. I can change the number of them. Markers, if I want to put the mean in, mean plus and minus one standard deviation, and I hit OK, and it's made all those changes for us. It's put the demonstration in, changed the, the axes, titles, and so on. When time comes to reproduce this graph, do a right mouse click and down here you can either copy the graph which is the picture part copy the graph and the grid which is the picture and the numbers here so if you only want the graph you would hit copy the graph let's close that control V will paste and we've got a picture of our graphic here And so with this, you'll have basically enough information to get by in most of the homeworks that you'll have in this course.